Hello everyone, we're back again with another critique video here. Today we have on the channel, Motivational Doc. Chiropractor, his name is Alan, I believe. All his credentials are is DC, chiropractic. Which, again, you know how I feel about credentials. It's not really that big of a deal. I have no administered credence conferred upon me and bestowed upon me by a governing institution that is possessed by cupidity and rapaciousness, and I actually wear that as a badge of honor. But at the same time, you gotta make sure that what you're saying is actually of veracity and credibility, and in this case, with Motivational doc it happens to not be almost ever from everything that i have seen from him thus far so we're gonna waste no time with this this video is called one tablespoon a day burns belly fat first of all how do you burn belly fat do you take it off of your body and combust it do you light it aflame and keeps clogged arteries away i can already tell you right now no it doesn't whatever he's going to say no it doesn't but let's go ahead and actually find out what he says right now again wasting no time as you guys should know by now, no supplements need to be taken on a carnivore diet as you can derive everything you need from such a diet. However, this does not mean that there aren't certain nutraceuticals that can be taken to further ameliorate inflammation and subsequently any illness, disorder, and or disease someone may be plagued with. One of the best products on the market, if not the best product, in doing such a thing is the flagship product to a company known as Cerule, known as Stem Enhance Ultra, which effectuates the release of one's own inherent stem cells from their bone marrow. When this occurs, this results in what may be perceived by some to be the epitome of regeneration. Now, I cannot under any circumstances claim any cause and effect relationships from this product and any heart health outcome. However, one may speculate what they wish with this information. If you want to know more about this product or are interested in buying this product, as well as many others from the Cerule Company, refer to the link on the screen now or the description below. Wow. Scintillating. Welcome. I have an elixir that I want to share with you today. No, you don't. You don't have an elixir. Keep it to yourself, by the way. So powerful. According to what? And according to who? You, Dr. Mendo? Because you're not a very credible source. I've done a video on you before, in the past, where you said to eat raw potatoes. And there are other sources of resistant starch, like our oats, our rice, uh, our potatoes, raw potatoes, raw potatoes, raw potatoes. The paragon, the paradigm of health information here. Going to not only help burn the body fat and shed the pounds. Okay, I already covered that. That's just sensational language. What you're really trying to say is to oxidize excess adiposity that one may have on their bodies. Sure. I'm going to tell you right now, one tablespoon a day of this while continuing other contraindicated behavior that promotes an insalubrious physiological environment within one's bodies and a non-convivial one is not going to ameliorate their excess adiposity, their overweight or obese status, Dr. Mandel. It will not. So try again. But it's going to keep your arteries clean and healthy. Is it? No, it's not, Dr. Mandel. You're referencing heart disease, the etiology of heart disease. And I can tell you right now, heart disease is characterized by inflammation. It is an inflammatory process characterized by hyperglycemia, high blood sugar, which leads to the glycation and oxidation of SDL and other LDL particles. Okay, one tablespoon of something is not going to ameliorate that if the process of hyperglycemia is still being perpetuated, has not been surceased in this individual. That means oxygen to all cells of your body. Wow! Yes. You know, another way to actually heal your arteries is by eliminating the contraindicated externalities that one is consuming exogenously via glucose, for example, or via their diet through glucose, fructose, sucrose, and especially seed oils, in fact, because of the byproducts of arachidonic acid after reacting with the cyclooxygenase and lipoxygenase enzymes. Wow. This is just sensational language. I see right through it. I'm quite sagacious, okay? You're not gonna trick me with this. But I do stress, watch throughout this video because you- oh, I will. Unfortunately, I will. need to understand. We need to understand. No, Dr. Mandel, you need to understand that you do not know what you're talking about with regards to anything related or pertaining to nutrition or diet. Stick to chiropractic care. Come back when you actually truly understand human physiology. Physiology? <laughs> Irony. Behind this elixir that's going to... Stop calling it an elixir. Again, this is this is meretricious in the extreme. That is a meretricious term. It's attractive on the surface. Underneath it all, after the unveiling, has little to no meaning. It'll work for you. Extra virgin olive oil is a monounsaturated... Oh boy. There it is. 
Extra virgin olive oil. Extra virgin olive oil contains mostly monounsaturated fatty acids, which upregulate one inflammatory pathway markedly and downregulate one slightly. So they're actually still inflammatory, just not as much as polyunsaturated fatty acids, which by the way, Dr. Mandel, are still the secondary constituent of olive oil. Polyunsaturated fatty acids are deleterious and contraindicated in the extreme. You need very, very little polyunsaturated fatty acids in the diet to subserve the needs for human beings. Also not to mention that most of the olive olive oil sold in stores in America is not true olive oil and is actually cut with seed oils in order to make it cheaper to manufacture. It's also oxidized to hell. Yes, even olive oil. The indicated fat for human beings is saturated fat, fat that is solid at room temperature, straight hydrocarbon chains biochemically speaking, the forms of butter, tallow, lard, suet, and ghee. That is what we were designed to eat as a species. So try again, Dr. Mandel, but let's see, let's see how you derived this conclusion. Well, let's see what you're going to show up on the screen, if anything, to support this piece of fallacious propaganda here. The acid, also known as healthy fats. Known as healthy fats by the mainstream medical establishment who perpetuates and promulgates false information due to, once again, cupidity, rapaciousness, misanthropy, and in many cases, posturing. Attempts to posture whenever they get things wrong and actually can't build up the temerity to acknowledge the fact and accept the fact that they were wrong. To exhibit some humility once in a while and admit, yeah, we f***ed up. This lowers total cholesterol. Yes, total cholesterol is not causal in heart disease and is actually very beneficial for the human body. Lest we forget what cholesterol is important for in the body. It is important for vitamin D synthesis and utilization within the body. It makes up the backbone of five major hormone groups, those being mineralocorticoids, estrogens, androgens, glucocorticoids, and estrogens. It makes up the myelin sheathing on your neurons. It's important in the absorption of nutrients because it's a constituent of bile acids. It makes up 20% of the brain. It interrupts communication between pathogenic bacteria via a process called quorum sensing. Any excess cholesterol that one consumes is simply recycled and or excreted by the body as is indicated at that instance in time. One should refer to the largest associative data set ever aggregated by the British Heart Foundation and the World Health Organization not working together, working independently from each other, in which they measured the total cholesterol levels and LDL levels of people in 168 different countries. These are several hundred million data points around the world. And then on the other axis, plotted the age-adjusted death rates per 100,000 persons per year versus their cholesterol level. And what they found is that the lower your total cholesterol level was below 220 milligrams per deciliter, the higher the incidence of deaths were from all causes and from every subcause, including, most importantly and most saliently, heart disease, strokes, and cancer. One should also understand that association does not equal causality. However, if there is no association or an inverse association, then causality can and should be dismissed. Lowering cholesterol is actually contraindicated in the extreme, Dr. Mandel, because your cholesterol levels are dictated by your genes and and nothing else. So try again. Bad cholesterol, the LDLs. LDL cholesterol is not cholesterol. It is a lipoprotein carrier that carries cholesterol throughout the body. In fact, it's actually the repairer. It's what carries the cholesterol to other places of the body in order to replenish cells that are in need of cholesterol, bereft and destitute of adequate amounts of cholesterol. Because if you didn't know, 40 to 50% of each cell membrane in all of the trillions of cells inside your body are made up of cholesterol. This is sophistry and chicanery, and also it's trite and banal, insipid, jejune, vapid, bleak nonsense from you, Dr. Mandel. You need to slow down, Fred. It's spacious. There's so much room for criticism here. And what does this mean? It means that you're a f idiot. Look at your face right now. You are so buoyant and alacrious when it comes to distributing this information, presenting this information to people. It is scary. It is scary how impressionable people are and how enticing you are to people. It's dismal and grim. That means lower risk. No, risk is a cause and effect word or term. There are no studies to inform us upon the risk of any heart health outcome or disease process as that relates to any aspect of human nutrition over any given period of time throughout the entire time human nutrition science has existed. There never has been and there never will be. In order to establish a cause and effect relationship, you have to take two genetically identical twins, phenotypically and genotypically identical, separate them at birth, put them into two metabolic ward lock-in rooms, observe them over their entire lives if you're attempting to infer lifelong health outcomes, outcomes, 40 years for 40 year long health outcomes, etc., and control for every single variable, including the time they wake up, the time they go to bed, their stress levels, their hormone levels, the time they eat, etc., and change only one variable. It's implausible for obvious reasons, but it's also exorbitantly expensive, and it wouldn't get past an ethics committee. There is no evidence of risk in human nutrition science, which I would guarantee is what you're going to cite right now. So let's see, Dr. Mandel. Arteries that can cause heart attack and 
Yes, yes, clogged arteries do tend to cause heart attack and stroke. Atherosclerotic plaque is largely composed of scar tissue that can become calcified at later stages, then causing thrombi. One-tenth of one percent of atherosclerotic plaque consists of cholesterol. You absolute buffoon. You moron. You ignoramus. You should shut your channel down, Dr. Mandel. Everything you say and espouse on here and pontificate on here is absolutely erroneous. These fatty acids in olive oil will help sustain normal blood sugar levels. And oh my God. Wow. The patent lack of understanding of human physiology from this man. <laughs> from this oddly eccentric individual, this very animated individual. Blood sugar levels are regulated when you don't eat glucose, when you don't eat sugar, because there is a demand-driven process within every single one of our bodies called gluconeogenesis that occurs in the liver, in which the liver, the body, takes non-glucose precursors, particularly the backbones or the glycerol backbones of odd chain fatty acids, but also amino acids as well, and turns it into glucose. I think I said that it was demand-driven, or that it is demand-driven, which means that it only creates glucose in the exact amount that is required at that given instance in time, which is good because glucose is toxic. It's the entire underpinning cause of heart disease because heart disease is underpinned primarily by inflammation, entirely by inflammation, actually. There are just other factors that contribute to inflammation besides glucose, but glucose seems to be, in our society, the common underpinning cause of heart disease and also every other major killer in the United States and in the Western world, actually. That's what helps assist in weight loss. And yes. What do you mean by weight, Dr. Mandel, by the way? Because I'm assuming you mean fat and water loss, which you need to make explicit. Because when you say weight, what is that composed of? Muscle, bone density, connective tissue, fat, water. That's important. That's not me being captious or pedantic. That's extremely important because if you indicate with your verbiage that losing weight always necessarily is a good thing, you will tell people indirectly, but actually pretty directly, that seeing numbers drop on a scale is a good thing. But what if you're losing muscle mass? What if you're losing bone density? What if you're losing connective tissue mass? Not a good thing. We need to be explicit when we talk about these formal concepts that you demonstrably do not understand. You charlatan. Wow. Promote the feeling of satiety, which prevents you- I'll tell you what promotes satiety. Fat and protein. Saturated fat and protein. From binging on other foods. Now these antioxidants in olive oil have powerful biological effects. If you're referring to the polyphenols in olive oil, I'll tell you this, I wrote about this in my book, Contraindicated. Please buy that whenever it's out. It's not out at the moment, but it will be. I'll put a picture up on the screen right now. Polyphenols are actually deleterious to human beings. Antioxidants within plants are only antioxidants for the plant. We've made the erroneous assumption that since our antioxidant status within our own bodies, particularly glutathione, rises after consuming plant antioxidants, that that is somehow the antioxidants from the plants working as antioxidants within us. When in actuality, the glutathione rising within our bodies is due to the fact that our bodies are upregulating its own antioxidants to combat the oxidative damage from the plant antioxidants. Polyphenols are damaging. Resveratrol, for example. Curcumin, found in turmeric, for example. Resveratrol is found in red wine. They cause DNA damage. Wow. It's amazing. That means it prevents oxidation of that bad cholesterol. That there is no such thing as bad cholesterol or good cholesterol. We already covered that. HDL and LDL are lipoproteins that carry cholesterol throughout the body. There is only cholesterol and cholesterol molecules. Prevents placking in those arteries. Cholesterol, once again, does not even remotely make up the majority of atherosclerotic plaque. You absolute ignoramus. You buffoon. Oil is also great for your gastrointestinal tract. How do you know that? According to who and according to what? You're going to espouse more chicanery and sophistry in order to prey upon your ignorant audience. Those monounsaturated fatty acids promote better mobility of food through the colon. There is no evidence of that. Once again, you're referring to human nutrition science, which you don't even have the temerity to cite, by the way, which is hilarious. Cite your claims. Putting that smooth digestion and normal bowel movement. So if you have constipation... <sighs> Fat itself effectuates peristalsis, saturated fat of the indicated kind for human beings. Which, by the way, the primary form of fat in beef is monounsaturated. Just a fun fact. This will be a blessing for you. Now, a uh, blessing, yes. You know what would be a blessing for me is if people like you would stop posting content. That wouldn't be a blessing for me. That would be a blessing for the entire world. And pepper is the number one most powerful spice. When it... 
What do you mean by powerful? If you mean damaging, even that's not true. It's not the most damaging spice. There are many that are worse than that. Cayenne pepper, anything really that's spicy from a pepper, you're referring to capsaicin, the molecule capsaicin. Capsaicin, I believe it to be a lectin, actually. Even if it's not, cayenne pepper and peppers in general have an exorbitant level of lectins in them, so either way, you're going to get a healthy dose of it. Lectins utilize molecular mimicry on the elements of the body that consist of quite an abundant amount of polysaccharides, therefore effectuating or initiating true triggering the immune response or the immune system to launch an immune response on those areas and it confuses them and it attacks its own domestic cells. It is an absolute underpinning cause, a pernicious insidious glacial cause of autoimmune disorders. So don't get me started on cayenne pepper. You're going to cite some more vapid jejun nonsense from human nutrition science, which by the way is not science. A lot of what you're citing I believe is epidemiology, which in and of itself literally isn't science. It is a precursor to undergoing actual scientific experimentation. It is misused and misapplied incessantly. If you're in this space, you're almost definitely aware of all of the comments that are made about the toxins in bottled water and especially tap water, so I'll save you the time on that. What almost always goes unappreciated, however, is the fact that you only absorb 15% of all water, no matter what kind it is, bottled, filtered, or tap. There is a way to fix this, however, and it's with a particular machine that makes water molecules that are much smaller than regular water molecules, so small, in fact, that it makes tea on impact with a tea bag without the need for boiling that water. This makes makes it 600% more hydrating than regular water, which of course will help with many health conditions, as it hydrates your cells more efficiently and more effectively than any other water that you can find. If you want to know more about this machine, like where to buy it, how it works, and also how it can replace your dish soap and sanitizer by emulsifying and mixing with oil, refer to the links in the description below. It's the cleaning arteries and Stop using these terms that are completely informal, cleaning arteries. Stop it. Especially whenever cayenne pepper does not do that. If anything, it initiates inflammation. It is a sign from the plant that you shouldn't be eating it. It is designed to discourage predators from eating it because we forget that plants are living things and just because they don't have eyes and a mouth doesn't mean they aren't living and trying to survive. And since they can't move away from the ground in which they are planted in, they have to develop other ways and other methods of discouraging predators from eating them, particularly biochemical weapons, weaponry. Capsaicin is one of thousands. And since inflammation is the absolute underpinning cause of heart disease, really it's high blood pressure, which is a part of the sequelae from inflammation, it's ancillary to that, then we can more judiciously infer, if you actually had some perspicacity and sagaciousness like I do, that it would be a more propitious and auspicious approach to actually contributing to heart disease. Goodness me. Increasing your metabolic rate. The no, Dr. Mandel. You know what increases your metabolic rate? Not slowing it down with contraindications, like eliminating deuterium. That's a good start. There's a water machine that I have that eliminates deuterium from your water. If you don't know what deuterium is, buy my book, please, when it's out, once again. Not upregulating your Randall cycle. Again, read my book if you don't know what that is. Staying away from excessive blue light inundation and exposure. Basically, don't look at blue light after the sun has set. Things like these, along with not eating sugar, abstaining from sugar consumption, being a little more abstemious and self-disciplined, and not eating seed oils and this and that, those are auspicious ways to actually increase your metabolic rate because you're not slowing it down. Capsaicin found in cayenne peppers. There it is, capsaicin. Yeah, found in cayenne peppers, found in all kinds of peppers, in fact. Decrease those cravings as well. Not necessarily, in fact. <laughs> What are you telling people to eat the cayenne pepper with? I'm sure you're not telling them to eat it in isolation. That would be hell. That wouldn't be very sapid. It's going to tell your body to eat less. And how the f do you know that, Dr. Mandel? What the hell are you talking about? Cayenne pepper is a fat burning food. No, it's not. How are you, where are you deriving this from? This is contrived. This is manufactured bullshit. <laughs> wow. Increase your body's thermogenic reaction. And this will okay, see, you're, again, you're using meretricious convolutes here in order to make yourself appear more intelligent than you actually are, more sapient than you actually are. You are not sensible, you absolute charlatan. Not only heighten your metabolism. According to what? Once again, I iterate this question. This espousal is based upon nothing. It is vapid, manufactured chicanery and sophistry will also increase the capability to burn stored fat. It's also chimeric. It is hoped for or wished for, but illusory and impossible to achieve. That is what this is. You wish that you could just take one tablespoon of olive oil and eat some cayenne pepper every day and burn, quote unquote, belly fat and keep your arteries from clogging. Not that simple, bud.
Cayenne pepper increases endothelial function within the artery. Increases is a cause and effect statement or term, and I've already covered cause and effect with respect to human nutrition science and how it is completely unable to be inferred or conferred upon such erroneous conclusions. That means this increases nitric oxide. A lot no, not necessarily, you buffoon. Already to expand and get wider. That okay, yes, nitric oxide is a vasodilator. Yes, it is. It is also produced in the body when you go out in the sun, Dr. Mandel. Why don't you just tell people to get sunlight? It's more oxygen to all cells of our body. Mason <gasps> in this cayenne pepper has been shown to decrease plaque formation in the arterial walls. No, it hasn't. False. That's a cause and effect statement. Once again, covered that. God. I mean, at least you're helping me expedite this video. F me. Those antioxidants bind to the HDLs, the high-density lipoproteins, which is our good cholesterol. No, it's not. <laughs> Once again, covered that. No such thing as good cholesterol. There's only cholesterol and different lipoproteins that carry cholesterol throughout the body. Those lipoproteins are not deleterious in and of themselves. Why would your body create lipoproteins or a compound within its body that is actively counterproductive to its own salubrious physiological environment that it is trying to achieve at all times? And this biologically makes it stronger to prevent the HDLs from being under attack. What are you talking about? Again, meretricious convolute and also chimeric. This is chimeric in the extreme. Hoped for, but illusory. Biologically makes it stronger to prevent the HDLs from being under attack. But the HDLs go through the internal vessels and for the LDLs, the low density lipoprotein, and brings them back to the liver before they start placking and cause more problems. They don't cause placking, you fing idiot. This is dangerous. LDL is not bad. It is the most inappropriately maligned compound in all of human nutrition. LDL is a lipoprotein and is actually a repairer and a restorer of damaged cells. If you had no LDL, you would die. And is one of the most powerful fruits on the planet. Oh my God, are you kidding me? One tablespoon a day turned into all this, this, this amalgam of insalubrious nonsense and slop. Lemons are fruits and contain Fructose, therefore, necessarily, they contain sugar. They also contain contraindicated fiber for human consumption because fiber is not only not required for human beings, but is also extremely abrasive to the enteric nervous system and increases immune dysregulation and therefore mucus secretion. It does a slew of other things as well that I don't have time to even talk about. Sugar is toxic to the human body. I'm trying to expedite this so I'm not going into a huge granular breakdown, but if you want the whole granular breakdown, either binge my channel or continue watching it in general or buy my book. Lemons promote healthy liver function. I humbly request. I'm supplicating. Lemons promote healthy liver function. No, they don't. Promote is a cause and effect term. There is no evidence for this anywhere in human nutrition science. In order to establish a cause and effect, rewind my video and find out how. Because it strengthens and increases the liver's detoxifying enzymes. Cause and effect. Covered that. It flushes out those unwanted materials and toxins from the body. It was associated in certain studies with this conclusion or this result in human beings that actually intook, consumed a certain amount of lemon during that study. What else were they doing? It is reductionism in the extreme, what you are conveying here and presenting. Reductionism. Wow. Encourages the liver to produce bile, which is an acid required for proper digestion. Yep. Hey, Dr. Mandel, what is a primary constituent of bile acids? Did you, what, what's a primary constituent of bile acids? Do you know that? Cholesterol. That's quite a humorous face that I just freeze framed on. This is probably exactly how he would look at me if I actually told him that. It's in your liver as well as your lymphatic system. And get it. What is your lymphatic system, Dr. Mandel? Can you even explain that to me? What are your detoxifying enzymes in the, in the liver that you're even referring to? Do you even know what you're talking about? Or are you just saying words? Those toxins. And when you combine all these together, this will help you lose body fat. No, it won't. Chimeric. Lemon will act as a natural diuretic and will... Lemon acts as a natural diuretic because of the exorbitant level of vitamin C contained within lemon. And if you didn't know, excess vitamin C is excreted in the urine. However, before that happens, something else occurs. It's converted into oxalates. Shall I show a picture on the screen of what oxalates look like within your body? Yes, 
They crystallize and they form raphides, which is what you see on the screen, or what you did see on the screen at least, which are smaller than your cell membranes, and therefore destroy them and obliterate them upon impact. Then it's excreted, by the way. Oh, and by the way, before it's excreted, it goes to the kidneys, obviously, because anything that's excreted via the urine goes to the kidneys, and 80% of kidney stones are calcium oxalate crystals meaning that the oxalates that the vitamin C turns into before it's excreted has to go through the kidneys and actually raises your chances, if anything, of actually developing kidney stones later down the line. As pernicious and insidious and as glacial as that progression may be, that would be my predicted prognosis. Reduce so, so good job, Dr. Mandel, on that one. Bloating very quickly. Reducing bloating. Yeah, because bloating is caused by a bladder repletion phenomenon. <laughs> No, bloating is usually caused by fiber. Bloating is an inflammatory response, usually caused by fiber, but also caused by other things like, I don't know, seed oils and sugar. Wow, everyone. I mean, this is, this is astounding. This is astonishing. Consumption of raw natural honey increases. Oh, just when I thought it couldn't get any worse. You're digging your own grave here, Dr. Mandel. Doctor. It's a disgrace to the title. Raw natural honey. Pure sugar. Primarily fructose. Fructose being 7 to 10 times more glycated, in other words, damaging, than glucose, the prototypical sugar. And also is very inconspicuously damaging in the body because it doesn't register on an HbA1c test. It also doesn't raise your blood sugar levels. People are then led to believe that it's therefore healthy, when in reality it's still glycating 7 to 10 times more than glucose. It's just inconspicuously glycating. It also is a immediately transmuted to fat in the liver. It is a direct cause of NAFLD. It's broken down the exact same way as alcohol, ethanol is. Therefore, it has the same metabolites. So good job, Dr. Mandel. This is amazing. I mean, this, this is actually astounding. Learn some basic biochemistry, you dolt. Polyphonic antioxidants in the blood. Already talked about antioxidants. You clearly don't understand them. And that's known to decrease heart disease. No, it's not. Not necessarily. You can opine that. That's fine. Or posit that. But there is no evidence causally linking antioxidants, the particular ones that you're citing or referencing, to an amelioration or a functioning as a bulwark against heart disease development and or exacerbation. You ignorant f The road to hell is paved with good intentions. Natural sugar found in honey known as- Natural sugar is the exact same as table sugar because it is literally the same f***ing molecule. <laughs> Where do you think we derive table sugar from? Uh, plants. Nature. Cellulose activates a protein that causes the immune cells to remove the fatty plaque from the arteries. No, it is associated with an activation of a protein in the people that consumed that honey for a given amount of time while they continued to do whatever the f*** else they were doing. <laughs> the underpinning etiology of heart disease is inflammation, which sugar, especially fructose, causally lead Two. Honey also acts as a prebiotic that cleans your digestive tract. A prebiotic, a food for probiotic bacteria is what he's saying. It only acts as a prebiotic to the bacteria that feed off of honey. And guess what? If you don't eat honey, you don't f***ing have that bacteria. This is amazing. This is actually egregious. This is the worst video I have ever reacted to. This helps remove toxic waste from the body. So now I'm According to who? I know that I'm coming across as surly and choleric and acrimonious. Because I am. I am bitter and angry at people like you. Sit down, shut up, and read. Study. All of the information taught in university that is actually of veracity is available for free online. So you have no excuse. If you have time to make a video like this, you have time to sit down and study. Do that instead. Share these simple fat burning artery cleansing ingredients. Bull sh You can start putting this to work. You're going to use one tablespoon of extra virgin olive oil. Oh, here's his magic recipe. Here's his amalgam here. Let's look at this amalgamation. One eighth teaspoon of cayenne pepper. Mmm. A good squeeze of fresh lemon juice. Mmm. Yeah, sounds good. And a drizzle or two of raw natural honey. This is an odious concoction here. And once again, insalubrious. Take a shot of this drink every time I say that. <sighs> I like to use a shot glass. I take my extra virgin olive oil, put it in one tablespoon right here. See, the olive oil that you are holding right now, Dr. Mandel, is not extra virgin olive oil. I just explained this. You have been duped. You've been had. You've been fooled. Goodness me, everyone. I put it inside my shot glass. Then I go ahead and I reach for my cayenne pepper, which is right here. 
It's not even organic either. I mean, if you're gonna eat plants, you might as well try and get organic. Unless, of course, I'm considerate of people that don't have a lot of money, so that's fine. If you're indigent, then fine, I get it. This measurement right here is one quarter teaspoon. We can read. Put about a half of it in here. Then I'll empty it right into here. Mm, yeah, good. Grab my grab lemon, lemon. I'll give it a I'll nice, give it a squeeze. squeeze. That lemon, lemon juice, juice counteracts, counteracts the, cayenne the cayenne pepper, pepper the, acid. the acid. That's, That's why you want to use the Put it in water, it's going to make it worse. Honey, and I'll just mix it up just like this. And right before breakfast, that's when you want to drink it. Not 20 minutes, not 30 minutes, right before. I want you to have food in your tummy, which will make it tummy. Tummy. So he's also juvenile. That's amazing. So much easier to assimilate this elixir so you can get those great benefits. You're not going to get any benefits from that. That is a contraindicated amalgam of toxic slop. It is toxic, by the way. Every single thing he put in there is toxic. I really want you to appreciate this synergistic effect between this extra virgin olive oil and this. Well, what I appreciate, and by appreciate, I don't mean in a good way. I mean, I recognize. I, I appreciate your exhibition of arrogance, complacency, and ignorance. And I am using that to my advantage. I'm exploiting that, actually, to bring awareness to this exhibition so that it may discourage people from watching your content. Because th this is this is horrifying. This is abhorrent. This is asinine bullshit that you were espousing here. Get a grip. And pepper. This will really... God, it's so patronizing. It's so, like, didactic. It, it, it Just stop. Increase that metabolic rate to help you shed those pounds. No evidence of that. No evidence of that. What the hell is wrong with you? Well, as keep those arteries clean. Okay, you said that, and I'm going to iterate my point, reiterate, actually, because I've repeated it a thousand times already. There's no evidence that what you are suggesting people do will actually help stave this off. In fact, if anything, it is conducive to encouraging it. You can also take this elixir right before dinner. Yeah, elixir. You're putting you're putting a f turd in a dress here. Which is optional. Yes, more cayenne pepper. A balanced diet. The worst f diet that you could ever consume for your physiological system as a human being of the same species as every other human on the face of the planet. A balanced diet is, in other words, a standard American diet, a very auspicious way of upregulating your Randall cycle, which causally leads to inflammation. Be very careful with the word cause. In this case, it is absolutely appropriate to use the word cause in this situation. A balanced diet is the absolute last diet that you should be eating right behind a vegan diet. Vegan diet is the second worst diet that you could be eating. Hydration slash water, you probably don't know anything about about that. I do, which is why I actually promote a machine that hydrates people's bodies more than any other water on the face of the planet. Exercise? Great. If it's of the right indicated kind for our species, which I guarantee you do not actually understand or know what that is. And sleep. Sure, sleep is the only thing on here that is actually something that I do not object to. Amazing. Will definitely help increase your metabolic rate, but no evidence of that. You're just saying sh You can only take it once a day it's still going to give you those great results. No, it won't. And get rid of that mirthless smile. You are feigning happiness here. The road to hell, Dr. Mandel, paved with intentions such as yours. Please share this with your friends and family. I'm sharing it in my own way. I'm sharing it with my own approach contained within it to discourage people from watching your fallacious, erroneous content. Leave your comments below because they're... I left my comments on this video. Hopefully you see it. You guys should share this video once it's uploaded with Dr. Mandel. Please link it in his comment section. I'm not saying that sarcastically. Be many and most important, make it a great day. I'm Dr. Alan Mandel. I'm Dr. Alan Mandel. Okay. Yeah, I won't forget you, bud. I'll remember you for the wrong reasons. Anyway, <laughs> that was definitely the worst video that I've ever reacted to on this channel. Ever. People like him need to shut up. I've gotten all my opinions out though, so I'm just gonna go ahead and close this. So if you enjoyed this video, please like the video, please subscribe to the channel, please leave your comments below, and also subscribe to the Patreon for uncensored content, unblurred pop-up references, ad-free, one week early uploads. Buy my book, I mentioned that a few times throughout this video, contraindicated by the audiobook version, the ebook version, whenever it's out at the moment, it is not out, but it will be. We're aiming for at least by March 1st. Email me if you have any other videos you would like me to react 
to, or if you have any questions, I'll try to get to them as fast as possible. Also, whenever the book is out, I'm going to go ahead and release the audio version of the Patreon clips on pretty much all podcast platforms, just because a lot of people want to listen to it in an audio format, and it increases the amount of people that are going to view the content and be exposed to the content, rather. So that's another thing. Just want to get that out there. With that being said, I will see you next time when we react to someone else. Hopefully not Dr. Alan Mandel, but I'll probably have to do it again because he is recidivist. In fact, he does this incessantly. So I will see you then.